Hi, this is a quick video about um, how to do protein detection using electrochemical um, biosensors. So I'm going to use um, a paper that I was one of the um, authors of to kind of illustrate this. So there's, um, there's many ways of um, detecting proteins on biosensors. So this is just a way of sort of introducing um, that topic or a methodology. Now, I have a quick picture here of some screen printed electrodes. Um, the kind of electrodes that I'm referring to, I've just grabbed a couple here. So this is a sort of screen printed um, carbon electrode from Zimmer and Peacock. And um, this is a screen printed um, gold electrode from um, Zimmer and Peacock. So we're talking about these kinds of electrodes and it's not, it's not the theme of this talk, but we basically have these kind of potential stats um, and the electrodes um, can, um, can be attached into the potential stats. So um, first of all, there's a, there's a sort of hardware consideration, which is, um, I'll maybe just bring my um, video up very quickly, not the video, but my screen. So there's hardware consideration. So in order to do this kind of work, you'll need a um, potential stat. Um, so that's an example of, of one of the potential stats on our website. And you also might need a screen printed electrode. Um, for this kind of work, I would probably suggest um, if you decide to go down a gold electrode route, then it will be the gold 303. Um, sometimes we might suggest the carbon 303. I would, pref I would like it if you were actually, rather than using what we call our value screen printed electrodes, if we were able to use our hypervalue um, screen printer electrodes. Um, so uh, because the price is just so much more competitive. But I want to come off this now and actually get to the to the main theme of this talk. So this the main theme of this talk is a strategy for functionalizing electrodes so that it become not an electrode but actually a sensor for proteins. So I'm going to use um, a paper that got published in IEEE Explore. Um, in that paper, we actually detected a protein called HCG. The only reason being is HCG is a kind of model system. Um, we were, you know, it, it's, it's easy enough to, to get hold of this protein, easy enough to get um, hold of the antibody for this protein. So let me now try and illustrate um, what we actually did in that um, particular paper. So what we did was this, we took the um, electrode of the screen printer electrode. And what we did is first of all, we did a technical cycle voltammetry just to characterize the electrode. If you're not sure about what cycle voltammetry is, then I think we're gonna, um, I'll put a link. If you're watching this on YouTube, I'll put a link below the video um, to another video where we introduce methods for electrochemistry. So we take the electrode, we characterize it by cycle voltammetry. And now we have to basically add a coupling agent to the electrode. So the coupling, electro, uh, coupling agent we use here has kind of two ends to the molecule. One end of the molecule is um, pyrene. Um, and pyrene is basically four aromatic rings that bind really strongly to carbon. So in this particular example, we're using a carbon electrode, we use pyrene, and um, on the other end of the molecule, there's what's called succinamide. And succinamide is a coupling agent that we can use later on to, to couple an antibody. So what we do is we take um, these pyrenes and the succinamide, so they're covalently bonded together. And we basically functionalize the surface. So the carbon is no longer a carbon surface. It's a carbon surface with these coupling agents protruding from the surface. And then we characterize the surface again. It's quite unusual in this, every time we characterize the surface, we often expect the surface to change quite dramatically and we see, expect to see quite a change in the cycle voltammetry. In this paper, we actually didn't, which is kind of unusual. Um, most of the time I would expect the cycle, this cycle voltammetry to change quite dramatically, but in this case, it didn't. Now this comes the bit now that we're, where we actually are going to start turning this electrode now into a biosensor because for HCG, which is the model um, protein that we were using in this work, there is an antibody and we were able to covalently attach the antibody 
um, to the surface because it reacts with the succinamide and forms a um, um, it forms a covalent bond to the surface. Now the next thing we need to do is this: that when you have a if you're making a biosensor for protein, you often use a recognition molecule. In this case, it was an antibody. You will hear people talk about actomers um, as well, but in this case, it was definitely an antibody. But we want the antibody to, uh, sorry, we want the protein to stick to the antibody or bind to the antibody, which is a specific interaction. And we don't want it to just generally stick to the electrode in a non specific interaction. So we want to block what's called the non specific um, interactions or non specific binding. And so what we do is we add BSA, bovine serum albumin, in this paper. We added that to the electrode. When I say add, we're often just pipetting these things on. At, a, at an R&D scale, we're just pipetting on. So now that we've actually added BSA, so what we have now is a antibody that's specific to the um, HCG in this particular case. And then we've blocked the surface with, um, with BSA to try and reduce the, the, the um, non-specific binding. And then we characterize the surface. Now, the new CV is much more... Um, what I would have expected where, in fact, the peak current here has shifted and decreased. Um, so the, the height has decreased and it's moved to higher potentials. And that's kind of what I would expect because we've basically blocking the surface. surface. So this first slide really has been about how we would take a screen printed electrode and convert it into a um, into an electrode that should be more like a sensor in terms of it has specific, um, specificity and selectivity. The next slide now is really how to test it. So what we do is we take our screen printed electrode and in line with the previous slide, we've functionalized it. And now what we want to do is test it. So in these axes, I'm going to show you raw data. And then on these axes, I'm going to talk about how we extract the signal. So the first thing we do is we just want to kind of baseline our sensor and see how our, our sensor responds when there is no protein present. So we have um, ferricyanide, which is a, called a redox reporting molecule in the solution. And we get a peak by a, a technical differential pulse voltammetry. Um, now, I didn't mention that we were using something called the Anapot. Maybe I did mention it, but the Anapot, and it has some software. Um, so when we were when we were building the sensor, we we're using psychovoltammetry to characterize it. When we're actually testing the sensor, we use differential pulse voltammetry, but both methods are available um, through the um, hardware. So we add in um, the reporting molecule and we get a peak whose um, position and height um, is due to the um, reporting molecule. Now, to kind of make sure that this sensor, and we, we basically report, you know, there's a concentration and we get a signal. Then we add in um, some of the protein and we rerun the differential pulse voltammetry and we get a new um, height and we plot that. Then we add in some more protein and we get a new height. And we can plot that. So now we start to see if we have concentration and signal that we have a signal versus concentration. And then finally, there we go. So um, if I was to summarize, and in fact, what I'll do now is, and this was the uh, data from the original paper um, itself. So if I was to summarize it, the first part of this presentation was really about how to make the sensor. And the second part of the presentation is how to test the sensor. So what I've really described is a way of doing a proof of principle as a first step to making a sensor for protein detection. And I have used HCG as the model of protein. Um, you could start thinking about, you know, detecting proteins for Alzheimer's. That would be a sort of um, a classic, um, another one. So there's lots of proteins in the world that are biomarkers for disease or biomarkers or markers for, um, for many things. And in order to detect them in a specific manner, we often find the corresponding antibody to them. 
and we have to immobilize that antibody onto our electrodes. And then we often have to block the electrode to stop what's called non-specific binding. So once we've then um, put the antibody on there and we put the non-specific binding material down, then we can start testing the electrode um, with the protein of interest and make sure that we get a signal um, that's proportional to the protein concentration. Um, and as I say, at Zimmer and Peacock, it's probably worth saying that, um, that we obviously have lots of screen printed electrodes. Um, it's probably worth saying as well, I mean, this is more relevant to maybe people in industry rather than um, maybe academia. Because in academia, you like, you know, I, I respect the fact that people like to build sensors from the ground up. Um, but if you're in industry, there may be, um, we do do what's called activated electrodes, where the electrodes are already um, activated to, to coupling with an antibody. And we have a carbon version and a gold version um, of those. And yeah, so in summary, um, I've shown you a paper that we wrote in the past and I've tried to illustrate here why the paper does what it does. We have to make the sensor, then we have to test the sensor. So um, if you've got any comments or questions um, and you're on the YouTube channel, then maybe just leave um, a comment and we'll, we'll check the comments and maybe get back to you. Okay, so um, I hope that was useful and thanks very much.